Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to GOD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Anna Charles, because today is the 7th of May 2020. So yep, yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's um, afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, oop. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then just a quick mentioning of our GOD YouTube channel, which popped up earlier. Um, so yep, uh, we can always uh, subscribe to it in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GOD Bank website and specifically our GOD research page which we uh, also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So it will take you to this page, uh, which, as I said, we update on a daily basis. So um, now then jumping into this map very quickly here. So let me just quickly quickly update this figure. So that was the number from this morning. Let's see by how much we have uh, grown. Uh, but by how much the, the number of infections has grown. Um, so, okay, so it, it has risen by about 20,000. So, okay, basically, um, we're still kind of holding in there. Uh, well, uh, kind of, I would say. But uh, yeah, the situation is it's slowly getting better. Uh, it's slowly getting better in Europe, um, in Asia, however, not in the US. So um, again, uh, the figure there uh, continues to rise and the total amount of deaths also continues to rise uh, uh, a little bit more than in other countries. So well, we'll continue observing that. Uh, now then, jumping into a few charts, um, here the, um, the situation, looking at the FTSE 100, um, now I talked about this one this morning and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this uh, on this because um, in a way, um, if we get a break above this 5,895 territory, then yes, there could be a chance for this one to drift further, uh, further north, um, looking at the picture right now. You can see that the index is trying to push higher. The uh, the fact that the pound is on the weaker side today, this is what's helping uh, to lift uh, the um, the FTSE 100 here. So we yep, will continue monitoring. The big question here is how um, how will this daily candle end up being and where it will end up closing? Because um, if it stays above the 5,895 territory, then yes, uh, then of course uh, we will consider a potential move further north. Um, as I pre previously mentioned, we need to see a nice good push above this barrier here, uh, the high of the uh, 30th of April, uh, which is around the 6,152 territory. So, well, for now, like I said, uh, all eyes are on this, 5,895. Uh, let's see if the index manages to close above it. For now, given the fact that the pound is on the weaker side, there is a good chance for this one to drift higher because, as we all know, the, the FTSE 100... Um, does benefit from uh, the weaker pound because a lot the most of the companies uh, that are listed on the FTSE uh, FTSE 100 their main operations are outside UK so uh, weaker pound is uh, looks good on their profitability so um, now then. Uh, Jumping into another index here very quickly. So NASDAQ 100, uh, looking at this picture, uh, yesterday it closed uh, slightly in the positive territory. However, it still kind of remained below this level. The one that I keep talking about yesterday, I've mentioned this level, the psychological 9000 zone. So it, as you can see, the index failed. Uh, it Yes, it moved above it, but failed to close above it. So um, however, looking at the cash index right now, and let me just qu quickly have a look at it, uh, we can see that the price is already uh, pushing further north and it's basically currently balancing near this level, near the 78.6% uh, 
retracement on the Fibonacci here so it will uh, well just maybe fractionally below it but it will be quite interesting to see um, if we can see a further push higher this is what I talked about uh, yesterday that uh, what I was saying that if we get a daily close above this barrier above the psychological 9000 zone then yes we will aim for further uh, for further acceleration to the upside however of course we'll be very careful with higher levels uh, what I was mentioning previously that first we will aim for this uh, 78.6 territory uh, 78.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci um, and uh, if that uh, if the price continues to accelerate higher here then the next target could be around the 9195 zone which is the high of the 24th of February um, and uh, a further move higher could uh, bring the uh, the index closer to the low of the 21st of February, which is around the 9,406 zone. So again, for, for now, we're just going to keep it there. Um, for now, let's see if we can, uh, we can get a further push above the 78.6% retracement on the Fibonacci. So that's, this could be quite interesting to, to watch, um, to get comfortable with slightly lower levels. Well, to be honest, as, uh, as I've mentioned previously, a drop below the 8,600 level would be required gold so gold is um, for now it's still stuck here uh, this is what I talked about this morning uh, when I was covering gold basically I was saying that in order to aim for lower levels we need to see a nice good daily close below the 1680 territory um, but in order to uh, aim for higher levels we need to see a push above the 1740 or 1715 level somewhere around there uh, which is the current highest point of uh, near the current highest point of this week and only then yep we could aim for slightly higher levels for now we're just neutral because it's stuck here uh, some might also say maybe this is a nice descending triangle. Of course, these tend to break to the downside according to all the TA text rules, uh, textbooks. Um, <clears throat> But as I said, we need that confirmation drop first. Um, and ideally, we would like to see a daily close uh, below the 1680 zone. So let's continue observing this one. Um, Brent oil. So pushing higher, um, as you can see, uh, it's, it's aiming for the high of yesterday, which is roughly around the 32.21 zone. Um, so the big question here is, can I actually, can this push above it? And uh, for now, everything's kind of leaning towards that. Um, however, we'll still remain careful. Um, a nice good push above the 32.21 zone yep could open the path towards higher levels and could open the path towards the 36.10 zone which is uh, marked by the high of the 13th of march and marked by the high of the 9th of april as well so we'll keep an eye on this one we'll see how it's performing uh but uh, for now yeah for now guys uh let's keep an eye on this one it's quite interesting let's see if the, if the if the commodity manages to overcome the uh the high of yesterday which is around the 32.21 zone so keep your eyes on that one and uh, if we do then yes this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and the next target could be around the 36.10 zone so so yep let's see if if that happens guys uh but don't forget that overall we're still within a downtrend here. So we're still below the, this downside line taken from the high of, this, of the 8th of January and any move higher up until here. Uh, and if this downside line remains intact, then yep, uh, well, this could in a way kind of uh, be seen as a, as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. So keep that in mind. Uh, Ripple. So Ripple is, uh, well, it drifted a little bit lower this morning. However, as you can see, it came close to uh, this upside support line. Let me just kind of adjust this very quickly uh, because I need to capture this low. So it came close to this upside support line and then reversed back to the upside. Um, so of course, we can say that as long as it remains above the upside line, then yep, there is a good chance for this one to drift higher. Um, however, in a, way, in a way for us to get comfortable with uh, higher levels, well, pre we preferably, we would like to see a, a break above the April's high, which is around the 0 0.2357 zone, and then aim for higher levels, because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and yep, more buyers could be joining in. For now, Yes, we are trading above this upside support line, but we are below the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. And as you can see, 
the crypto tried to overcome this a few times but failed to do so so and failed to stay uh, up if, if, yes it did climb above it but failed to close above this 200 EMA so that's why we are a little bit on the cautious side here um, in terms of the downside still to get l uh, comfortable with lower levels we would like to see a drop below the 0 0.2052 zone here and then we could aim for further declines for now we're just re we remain neutral and just continue observing the price action so uh, US dollar against the Turkish lira so this is what I talked about uh, this morning when I was covering uh, US dollar against the Turkish lira and uh, I was telling you guys <clears throat> to keep a close eye on this barrier here the 7.2069 zone so so um, uh, it I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here uh, because this was the all-time high and let me just jump into a monthly chart this was the all-time high the previous all-time high because we've created a new all-time high today um, and uh, it, it the the pair managed to drift here and test this level the 7.2685 zone from which as you can see it kind of reversed sharply to the downside and drifted lower and drifted back below the this previous all-time high near the 7.2069 zone so uh, now the big question here is can we see a bit of a deeper correction to the downside and the reason why I'm saying correction because we are still above this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of March and in a way as long as the rate remains above the subside line uh, the still the kind of the outlook remains somewhat positive because uh, something like this could happen where we could see a rebound and then a pu another push higher however if this upside line starts breaking and we see the rate falling below the high of 22nd of April uh, and which is also actually yes the highest point of April which is around uh, 7 point uh, zero zero uh, let's round it up to was the 80 so 7 point zero zero eight level if we get a drop below this then yes we st we will start looking at some lower levels uh, but again for now guys uh, it is yes it, it is a little bit drifting to the downside as you can see it fell even all the way here towards the 7.06 territory um, now it's currently balancing at around 7.15 zone uh, this this morning we saw this one uh, floating near the 7.26 territory slightly above it and yep like, as you can see now the pair drifted back down back below the uh, the previous highest point uh, here, which was reached in 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 May 2000 sorry in August 2018 so yep guys uh, for now it could be quite interesting so let's see how this is gonna play out uh, US dollar against the Japanese yen so this is what I talked about this morning that um, I was saying that even if it travels back above this par barrier this 106.34 level which we were uh, which I was keeping a close eye on uh, yesterday uh, because uh, what I was saying that if we get a drop below this then this could increase uh, the mm, the pairs chances of, of drifting further south uh, but as you can see it, f it almost kind of found support near this level here the 105.94 zone uh, from which it rebounded and is now pushing higher and is pushing back above the 106.34 that doesn't mean that from here here we will start pushing higher basically all eyes now are on this on this downside line because if that line continue, continues to provide decent resistance then we could see another round of selling but if it breaks now this is where we could start looking at some higher levels uh, but again to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we need to see a push above the 107.50 zone so that's why for now we're playing the waiting game uh, GBP USD. So um, today was a big day for the uh, for GBP traders because we did get some information from the BOE. So first of all, uh, it, it started off the morning with keeping the interest rate as the same as it is, the same as it was uh, at 0.1 percent, so plus 0.1 percent. Uh, so they've increased their QE, um, and uh, well then we had the inflation report coming out from um, from the BOE later on so it came out a f uh, let me just double check that very quickly so it came out a few a few hours ago um, is this correct um, 
Okay, so it used it was on the calendar. Yes, I mean I, I I'm sure that we had an inflation. Uh, yes, an inflation report from uh, BOE. So, okay, let's leave it for the, because I need to sort out this information here. Um, okay, so basically the first the mo the most important thing is that yes the on the announcement of the interest rate, the pound accelerated to the upside, but as you can see, it kind of uh, drifted higher, uh, tested the 200, the 21 day EMA here on the daily chart and then drifted back down. What we can do here is actually how we could look at it this one, different way in the G, on the GBPUSD here. Uh, so if we jump into a four hour chart and we drag, we take this not this one, but uh, this uh, this downside line here. Uh, we take it and we reuse it, and we will mark something like this. So basically, we'll grab this high, the high of the 30th of April, and we will draw a downside line. And you can see, yes, this morning we did get an overshoot here, but it still failed to stay above this downside line and drifted back down. So um, now, in a way, looking at this picture. Um, we can see we can say that first of all that uh, overall GBP USD remains within a, a within a range here so roughly between the uh, 1.2163 level here on the downside and the 1.2648 zone on the upside so um, in a way it what we can do here is how we can look at this is if this continues to drift lower and if it continues to respect this downside line then yes uh, and especially if the rate falls below the the low of yesterday which is around the 1.2308 zone then yes we will aim for slightly lower levels we will target the uh, the low of the 21st of April which is around the 1.2245 zone and then uh, it, if that fails to, to provide support then yep further declines are possible to maybe to even towards this 1.2168 zone but again for now guys be very careful uh, yes it is getting currently a hold up below this downside line but in order to get comfortable with further declines we would like to see a drop below the low of yesterday so keep your eyes on that one uh, euro Aussie now this one here I talked about this one and uh, looking at the daily chart what I was saying guys that in a way for now although yes it is drifting lower um, still we will remain careful with the downside because for us to get comfortable with lower levels and let me just actually get rid of this downside line because it's just in a way now um, in order for us to get uh, comfortable with lower levels we would like to see a drop below the uh, the lowest point of April which is around the 1.6540 zone if we do get a drop below this then yes uh, further declines are possible because this this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and maybe more sellers could be joining in however as you can see it's currently getting a hold up near the um, near the 200 day EMA um, it found support here today and uh, yep we could it still kind of gives a bit of chance for uh, for the bulls to step in so if I jump into a four hour chart you can see that um, now the kind of the the bulls are really fighting hard to bring this one higher however to get comfortable with the upside as I've mentioned previously we would still like to see a push up of the 1.6880 zone here and then we could target slightly higher levels for now we're just being very careful and cautious and uh, we'll continue observing the price action but um, like I said uh, we're not really getting comfortable with the downside yet because as I've, met, as I've showed you as I showed you the daily chart we need to see a drop below the lowest point of April this way the pair would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines are possible for now it's getting a hold up near the 200 day EMA so let's see if it can continue doing that if it does then well I mean we could see a bit of a rebound here and a push back higher so uh, now then guys uh, and finally euro USD so here the situation is still difficult so as you can see the pair drifted lower it tested the 1.0777 territory uh, the lower side of this range where the pair is currently sitting at um, but uh, it's failing to break below it so of course don't get me wrong we still have a full US session to go through so let's see if we can travel further below this 1.0777 zone if it continues to provide support then an, uh, a rebound is possible however we'll be we'll still be very careful with that rebound because it might get a hold up near the 21 day EMA but if this starts dropping straight away and we see a daily close below the 1.0777 
then we can get then we can start examining deeper extensions to the downside so uh, maybe even going back all the way here towards the lowest point of March near the 1.0633 zone so keep your eyes on this one with the upside, um, as I said, uh, it, if this area pr pr continues to provide decent support, we could see a rebound here and a push higher towards this 21-day EMA on the uh, 21 EMA on the daily chart. Yes, but look, if we look at the four-hour chart, uh, how we could position ourselves here is if we get a push above this little area somewhere around here above the 1.0824 zone um, then maybe there there's a chance for this one to drift a little bit higher for that like I said for that correction towards that 21 day EMA um, but again for now uh, as you can see it it is a big battle right now between the bulls and the bears who will take uh, who will take the lead who will uh, take the upper hand um, but uh, yeah, all eyes guys are on the daily candle and let's see where this is going to end. If it's going to stay here, um, we'll, stay be we'll, be we'll be very careful and cautious uh, because like I said, it still could have a chance to rebound or it still could have a chance to drop lower. But uh, like I said, for us to maybe start looking at higher levels, uh, at least some higher levels a push back above the 1.0824 zone could do the trick here but if it starts dropping below the 1.0777 well i mean like i said then yep we could aim for lower levels so guys i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening i really appreciate that um so yep thank you for your time so um i hope you like i said you found it useful um if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning my traders uh, espresso that's as always seven o'clock oh sorry seven o'clock six o'clock GMT time, um, maybe just a little bit after that. Um, allow a few minutes to get the video uploaded, and uh, yeah, we'll 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 take it from there. We'll pick up on some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll see what to expect for Friday. Um, yeah, so guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, and bye bye.